Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So it's time to have an honest uh, communication about what's wrong with the Archimedes engine and why it's so horribly delayed. Or is it? Uh, I'm not trying to brag, but the last two, three videos that I've done about Rocket Lab, I think they have given the most value that I've ever done as a creator about a company. Uh, so I'm not saying that to brag, but... Uh, in these videos, I went over how the Neutron is one of the most ambitious or probably the most ambitious uh, timeline for a rocket program uh, that I have seen. And if we would have been done uh, in 2024, it would have been, um, I don't know how to say it, like maybe a miracle or like it, it then Neutron would have been developed faster than Falcon 9, Falcon 1. I had a whole list of a lot of rockets. Um, and Neutron would have been the fastest developed uh, rocket. And the truth is that even if Neutron comes in 2026, 2027, it's still a very fast uh, rocket development program. It's just we have an amazing team, uh, an amazing guy called Peter Beck, and they're really shooting for the moon, quite literally, actually. And they set very, very ambitious targets. So um, number one. So then number two, in the other video... Uh, I did a complete financial calculation of how much this delay affects uh, Rocket Lab's financials and how we you know, don't need to be freaking out and we don't need to be selling our shares, run to the hills. Uh, and it simply has to do with that the space systems of Rocket Lab is doing amazing. And number two is that Peter Beck is very production focused when he's developing this rocket. So... Um, we looked at, you know, that in the Falcon 1, when it was developed, there was no factory, uh, there was no supply chain, there's no nothing uh, developed behind it. It was simply basically for the investors to show that SpaceX can shoot up a rocket and then Elon was able to uh, close more funding so SpaceX doesn't go bankrupt and quickly after they uh, abandoned and went on to the Falcon 9. Uh, so Rocket Lab has a lot of money. Uh, they are very smart with how they approach things. Uh, the company has a very good track record on, um, on you know, de delivering and delivering very reliably and, you know, uh, uh, overachieving expectations. So really, there's nothing to worry about here. Maybe the communication could have been better on the timeline. Uh, they always disclose it's a rocket program. But what they should say is that we have the world's tightest timeline on a world on a rocket program, <laughs> so uh, people understand what's really happening. So, and now there is, I think, the whole Rocket Lab community is waiting to see this hot fire test, and it's just not happening. So I went through all the tweets, and I decided to do a little bit of digging because I never did due diligence on how fast rocket development is. And, and that's kind of a mistake for me that I, I never went into that. I just took management uh, at face value that, okay, Neutron is going to be 2024. And if it's a little bit delayed, maybe 2025. Uh, but now that this delay happened, I did the do, due diligence and now I'm trying to do due diligence um, on this engine. So this is going to be a very interesting video. So if you like it, you have to make sure that you're subscribed. If you have gotten value out of it, uh, consider joining uh, and becoming a channel member. We have 13 channel members and three Patreons. And you guys are amazing for supporting the channel. And keep check in the comments because I'm really not a rocket scientist. I used AI to help research this video. And I have always been pretty much burnt when I used AI. Uh, I think in this case, it's going to be fine because it's very, very logical, but I'm sure if there is very technical guys, they're going to roast me in the comments. So after the world's longest intro, let's begin this video. Uh, so Archimedes engine is here. This was the tweet on May 6th. So this is May, June. We're in July. This was two months ago. Uh, and then... Uh, the next tweet that comes is actually this one. Isn't it beautiful? Say hello to our first Archimedes engine. It's already out of the door, out of our engine development complex in Long Beach and installed on the test stand in Mississippi at NASA Stennis. Uh, this is also the same day, May 6th. Uh, 
and then on June 12th, so this was a month ago, this is when people were like, the, the hot fire test is really, really coming now. Uh, then they posted engine install and leak checks are complete. Test stand infrastructure checks are complete. An engine stand and operation is validated. And actually, now that I've done this research, they're quite good on communicating about what is happening with the Neutron. It's just us, the retail investors, we're not rocket scientists. So if Rocket Lab, you're watching this video, if you could please keep in mind that the investors are not rocket scientists, they're like space enthusiasts. Uh, so maybe you need to communicate a little bit uh, differently. Uh, and then the latest one is from June 26, which I think was also a very good tweet. Uh, let me tell you why. With our first Archimedes engine on the test stand, part of the next set of engines are rapidly coming off our 3D printing uh, production line. Pumps, housings, and components for pre-burner assembly are just some of the many parts we, addi we additively uh, manufacture at our engine production complex in Long Beach, allowing us to rapidly build and iterate throughout the engine's development and production. So they're dropping major clues here. Uh, so they basically built a production line where they 3D pin parts, and this is used in the production of new engines, but it's also used in the development. So I realized that maybe us retail investors, we completely misunderstand what a hot fire test is because in my idea it was like okay they set the engine up on the test stand and then they just get the engine going and you know they make a film and we're all happy and you know life moves on so i started asking uh chat gpt like what goes into a um a hot fire test like why do they even do this right because you have to remember that peter beck is very production oriented this engine has to serve many, many purposes. It has to be rapidly reusable, has to be able to operate at a uh, low pressure. Um, yeah, it has to be reliable. Um, they have to know, you know, all the, you know, what's the, what's the max that the engine can go to, what's the least that the, that the engine can still operate at. So, here is what goes into a hot fire test. So number one, preparation, mounting the engine, rocket engine is securely mounted and connecting the fuel lines. Pretty logical, right? And this was shown in the tweet that it was done. Then pre-test checks, system checks, engineers check all the uh, systems. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty logical. Safety checks, pretty logical. Countdown and ignition. So a countdown begins similar to what you see before the rocket uh, um, launch, ignition. This is also very, very logical. Running the test, thrust generation, the engine produces thrust and the engineers collect data on how much force it generates. This is like checking how powerful the car engine is. Then the engineers monitor the performance. Then they shut down the engine, stopping the engine. After the desired test duration, the engine is shut down. This can be done gradually, abruptly, depending on what uh, t the test is looking to achieve. Cooling down. The engine and test stand are allowed to cool down before anyone approaches them. The rocket engines get extremely hot. Post-test analysis. So basically what I'm already, again, this is where I might be roasted here, but just because you fired up the rocket, uh, it doesn't mean that the hot fire test is done. Like that, this was my understanding. You have very specific targets and KPIs and, you know, different things that the rocket has to hit. And most probably when they fire up the rocket the first time, probably pressures are wrong, temperatures are wrong, uh, you know, maybe the fuel pumps need to set up. So you, you basically, you start to run the engine, you monitor everything, and it might be that you have to stop it, you know, analyze the data. It might be that you have to 3D produce parts to, to change them out. And here it says, post-test analysis, data review. Engineers analyze and data collect during the test to see if the engine performed as expected. Physical in inspection, the engine is inspected for any signs of damage or wear. And iteration, very big point. Adjustments, if any issues are found, engineers uh, make adjustments to the engine or the test setup, and this it gets repeated. So this is, this is what we as retail investors don't understand. Maybe they have done multiple hot fire tests by now, but it's not a product. Like the KPIs are not where they want it to be. And Peter Beck in the interview with us and in many other interviews, he said that 
They are not trying to quickie an engine and set something on fire and pump the stock. The product of this hot fire test is they have a rapidly reusable, very reliable, cheap to produce, uh, easy to fix rocket engine where they know, you know, if this happens, then this is wrong. If the pressure is off here, this is what we need to fix. And to get this, it takes time. And it's completely understandable. So I, then I was like, okay, but what is the general duration of a rocket test? So this is, again, I want the people who are rocket scientists that are watching this channel to chime in in the comments. Um, but so I, I, w I wanted to research how long is an average. So I did this video about, you know, like the average rocket development. And this is similar, like what is the average uh, hot fire test or test campaign on a rocket? And here it is, the initial design and setup one to three months. Don't know how accurate that is. Preliminary testing and calibration one to two months. So do you remember that uh, we were two months ago like this? And the next tweet after that was that we are at the test stand. Uh, so just to hook up, you know, the right fuel lines, the right sensors and right everything is one to two months. Guess what? We're just at that level, okay? So series of hot fire tests, one to three months. So that means that we're in beginning of July. So it's in Q3 uh, when they, they will have done the enough tests that they are, they are happy with, right? And then data analysis adjustments between tests, one to two months and final evaluation and reporting. So if they follow this timeline, which it, I guess it's a mix of data. So it's probably like SpaceX, which is really fast, like uh, together with ULA. So maybe SpaceX has done it in six months and ULA has done it in one and a half year. And then you get an average that is uh, one year uh, in this, but it still gives you an idea that it's not just, we go to Stennis, we set it up, we connect it up and we light a lighter and boom, and we put it on YouTube, okay? Um, then I wanted to check with another AI uh, because ChatGPT doesn't give references and I was really af afraid of being roasted. So I checked with Perplexity AI and I try to read into these references, but it's just way too much reading that I uh, don't have the capacity to do. But this is what this AI said. While the search results don't provide a specific average duration, they suggest that rocket engine test campaigns typically last for several months, potentially years. So that is just something to think about. So I think that, you know, the tests are going according to plan. Uh, rocket Lab is a fantastic company. They have a very good track record on delivering. Us as investors have nothing to worry about. The only thing Rocket Lab, if you're watching, if in your communications, you could think with, because maybe for like a rocket engineer, when they hear that, okay, we're on the test pad, they're like, okay, we know exactly what is happening. But somehow like for us retail investors, like when you posted that we are at Stennis, we were like, okay, next week, we're gonna see fire and uh, it's going to be amazing. But it's like a completely unrealistic expectations that comes from us not knowing what we're talking about when it comes to rockets. I hope we know what we're talking about when it comes to stocks. So everybody chill the F down. There's nothing wrong. I'm sure we will get very nice updates uh, soon. And uh, Rocket Lab is still an amazing company and I have full trust in management. So let me know in the comments what you thought about this video. Let me know if this video gave you any value and uh, I'll see you in the next one. And if you wanna support the channel and be so kind, there is a link in the description box below. Thank you so much. Ciao, ciao.